And today's topic is insulin resistance and diabetes, what you need to know. So this is something that I know I've had a ton of questions on how to regulate blood glucose levels, whether you're maybe medicated or not. These are all natural tips that I'm sharing today to help you in this department and finding that balance for blood glucose. And that's really important for your overall health, but I'm gonna talk about some of the causes, some of the symptoms, and of course the tips how to regulate your blood sugar. Now today, of course, like every week, we have our trivia portion of the show. So when we get to that quiz section towards the end of the show, we are drawing today for the AccuBlood Sugar Balance. So this is from our great sponsors at VitaTree, and we are very grateful for their support of this program. Now, if you are new and you're watching for the first time, especially on TikTok, make sure that you are following Team Dr. J9, because if you are the winner in our quiz section of the show, we have to be able to reach you so make sure that you are following team dr j9 you'll see the commenting happening if you don't know exactly where to go in the comments i'll make sure that my producer puts that in so that you know who to follow if you are a lucky winner if you're new to my channel welcome in i hope that you'll subscribe and also turn on those post notifications if you do have questions and comments throughout the show please let me know and put it in the comment section i've got instagram in my ear so hello to all of you TikTok i have in front of me on my tablet and of course I will be having my help from behind the scenes from my crew here at the Dr. Janine show they're feeding me my Facebook and my YouTube commenting as well so I appreciate all the likes and the thumbs ups and all those things that you can give me throughout the show it always makes it so much more fun okay so let's get started insulin resistance and of course diabetes now a little bit of physiology so how what is insulin how does this work well let's start with eating so the food that you eat is broken down into sugar and that's what our body recognizes our body knows how to deal with glucose now when that blood sugar enters your bloodstream this then signals the pancreas to release insulin so insulin is that thing that helps your blood sugar to actually enter into the cell. So here we see a great diagram. So if you are watching on YouTube, you can see what we're showing here. And that is that lock and key mechanism. So insulin is actually opening up the ability for the cell to intake that blood sugar. And that's really important. Now insulin also signals the liver to store that blood sugar for later use. So that we do have these backup mechanisms in our body. And this is when our backup mechanism start working in the wrong way that's when we can start to gain weight and have issues with our blood sugar so that's something that I'll be talking about today and of course the tips how to overcome this and how to really stabilize your blood glucose levels now when our insulin levels get low then that lets the liver know so the liver again is very much complicit in this entire functioning and that's why you know often I go back to why is it so important to do always a full body detox? Make sure that that liver is healthy. Well, here's another one of those reasons, and that's why it's important to make sure that your liver function is optimized. So now the liver is going to release any of that stored blood sugar so that it always has energy available for survival for our body. So our body is always trying to gauge, are we surviving or and thriving or not so much? And that's when we have these backup mechanisms like fat storage is actually part of our survival, but it goes haywire and that's why it's important to get these systems under control. Now, of course, we can get into problems and the insulin resistance part of this whole story happens when our blood sugar enters that bloodstream and it's far too high. So we can think probably top of mind a few of those foods that might do this that really increases that blood glucose it's always always the fun yummy ones of course that are high in sugar and now the pancreas is going to is going to pump out more insulin to get that blood sugar into the cell so it can be metabolized in term into energy so what we see on this diagram is that yes we have that high carbohydrate meal and then we have that high glucose in the blood now the pancreas is pumping out that insulin and and the pancreas at a certain point just kind of says you know 
I don't want to do this anymore because I, you've worked me so hard. I really don't want to do this anymore. And that's when we start to have that insulin resistance. So this is something that, yes, I'm very much simplifying this, but just so that you appreciate if you tax your body with too many carbohydrates and there's another food group that we'll talk about, you've heard me talk about it in other videos, which is very compromising to this entire, you know, insulin resistance. This is something that you probably didn't realize. So I'm going to get to that in just a second. You got have to hold on for that. But but this is something that now when there's a lot of insulin, now this is telling the liver and the muscles to store that blood glucose. And this again can cause more insulin resistance. And this is then tied also to that leptin resistance. And it's usually the leptin resistance that happens first before we get the insulin resistance. Now, when the we have weight gain happening because unfortunately, this whole mechanism is not working to burn up our blood glucose. So now we have that blood, high blood sugar. And guess what happens when you spike your blood glucose levels and then it drops again, you become very hungry. And what do you crave? You crave all the wrong foods, all the more carbs to spike you up again. So you have this entire roller coaster thing happening and it isn't the best thing to always be snacking. And that's why in my tips, we're going to talk about that because you don't want to have that roller coaster. You want to actually allow your body to get a little bit hungry. And then, you know, you've got all of your hormonal balance to be able to help you in that regard. So, oops, this is the problem. See when I have control. <laughs> that we get out of hand here. Okay, so help me out. So this is the, in terms of, okay, we have to go to the, <laughs> to the next one. Anyways, who's here? Who's saying hello? Um, Amy, nice to see you. Amanda, hello, hello. And yeah, great questions. I will get to those. So make sure you stay. Oh, Raina, your daughter is type one. Um, Steve is here as well. So yeah, so definitely Dr. Devine. Hello, nice to see you. Good morning, good morning. So we will answer some questions. So make sure you stay on the line after we finish streaming live. Please stay on TikTok and Instagram live and I'll answer some of these questions that are partially related um, and to help you out. And yeah, Rain, I hope that today's you know episode will help to give you some guidance for your daughter. Okay, so you know that I often talk about leptin and leptin signaling and usually it's the leptin resistance that happens first before you will develop your insulin resistance. Resistance. So please, if you've missed my shows on leptin resistance, please check them out. That's very, very important. No matter where you're at in, you know, leptin resistance, insulin resistance, diabetes, it's and chronic inflammation. It's really important that you get this under control. So what happens now with leptin resistance is you have something that which is measurable in your blood work. It's called the highly sensitive CRP, and that is an inflammatory marker. And what happens when you have this high leptin is that you're going to increase this C-reactive protein and now that cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. So the proper signaling of your leptin to your brain, to the hypothalamus, is now messed up to make it, you know, simplified. And there's another inflammatory cytokine called TNF-alpha, and then that also leads to this insulin resistance. So this is something that has been studied in pregnant women who, you know, started to have hyperglycemia issues and they actually measured the TNF alpha levels and found a definite, a definite correlation between the two. So this is something that, yes, fixing the leptin resistance, fixing that, that CRP, that chronic inflammation, fixing those inflammatory cytokines, which you've heard about in the news in the last couple of years, can be very destructive, but more importantly, can be leading to that insulin resistance and those high blood glucose levels. Now, when you have the high leptin levels, the high insulin levels, eventually you will also have high cortisol levels. So we know that in terms of cortisol and our adrenal function, when people talk about adrenal insufficiency, adrenal fatigue, you're stressed out, you've maxed out your body. And, you know, this is then related back to that insulin. And of course, before that, the leptin, but something called pregnenolone steel. So this is something I do have a video on pregnenolone steel. I want you to check it out. I simplify, you know, what's happening 
happening when those leptin levels are high and now the body preferentially will take from pregnenolone it's going to make more cortisol when your leptin is high you're making more cortisol so you can see that this is all correlated with one another and this is a problem because how do you get out of that hamster wheel of having all of this chronic inflammation and high blood glucose levels well those are the tips that I'm sharing with you today so stay tuned as I'm coming up to the tips in just a few moments so if you're just tuning in I'm Dr. Janine I'm talking all about insulin resistance and diabetes what you need to know we're streaming live on YouTube Facebook Instagram and of course TikTok so what are some of the causes well we talked about the leptin resistance so those that leptin signaling especially when you're overweight. So the more fat cells you have, the more leptin you have, and that will then overwhelm the brain. The brain no longer will take in that leptin signaling. So the brain is sort of giving and getting false information as to your state of affairs. And when your brain should be getting the signal, okay, I've got enough body fat, I don't need to go and seek out more food, it's actually getting the opposite because it's resistant to the leptin and you're hungry all the time. So that's one of the telltale symptoms of leptin resistance and this whole hyperglycemia thing uh, with your insulin resistance is that you often will be hungry quite often and for all the wrong foods usually those high glycemic foods sometimes the fatty foods as well now of course if you're eating a lot of those high glycemic foods a lot of carbohydrates this is going to put you at risk of definitely the insulin resistance and of course being pre-diabetic or even diabetic now another food group that I promised, and I'm glad that we just showed donuts, <laughs> because it's the polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially the highly processed ones. And they are very compromising to your insulin levels. So we always talk about the carbs, the carbs, the carbs, the sugars, the sugars, or spiking your blood glucose. Well, guess what? Those highly refined vegetable oils, canola oil, or even grapeseed oil, which I used to use in cooking all the time, are highly inflammatory, but also they're spiking your blood sugar levels. And there's a few different mechanisms. They mess up your mitochondrial health. And, you know, there's another mechanism as well that, you know, the PUFAs are very destructive for balancing or trying to find that balance with your insulin level. So please, you know, you've heard me talk about it in multiple, vitam uh, you know, videos that I have here. You know, please do your best to eliminate as much as possible these PUFAs. Guess what? It can take up to a year to eliminate the PUFAs from your fat cells. So let's say a year ago I was eating a lot of PUFAs, a lot of fries, a lot of donuts, a lot of, you know, I was cooking with vegetable oil. I may not be free of those PUFAs out of my fat cells even today. So it could take up to a year. Now from your brain, it can take up to three years to get those PUFAs out of the brain tissue. So, you know, food for thought and start having some of those healthier fats, which of course I will share in this video as well. Now, blue light toxicity. Here's something that I'm sure you may not have heard yet, that all of this artificial light in our eyes is definitely raising our blood sugar levels. And in this study, so it's not just me saying this, bright light alters metabolism. And this study showed that blue enriched light exposure acutely altered metabolic function in both the morning and the evening compared to dim light. While morning and evening blue enriched light exposure both resulted in higher insulin resistance, evening blue enriched light led to higher peak glucose. So yeah, your environment is, has a lot to do with what's going on with your inner metabolism. It's not always about the food. So if you're wondering, you've got, you know, high blood sugar levels, you don't eat carbs, what is doing it? Maybe it is the PUFAs, but maybe you've eliminated those as well. It could be because of your environment. So just be very aware of the artificial light from your devices and all those things that are coming at your eyes. You have to protect your eyes, but also you have to supplement the eyes with what they need, especially the macula with high amounts of lutein to be able to protect from that blue light toxicity and DHA as well, which, you know, I've talked about last week in last week's episode, all about, you know, the essential fatty acids and especially that DHA, why it's so important. If you missed that episode, please do tune into that so that you don't miss out on that great information on DHA. Now, there's also something in terms of our environment, which I'm sure you can guess, is the EMF. So the non-native EMF, so the electromagnetic fields around us that whether it is from, you know, 5G, it could be cell phone towers, your Wi-Fi, your cell phones, 
any type of dirty electricity as it's called as well so even from outlets in your home this is why I don't like anybody you know charging their cell phone near their bed or having anything near their bed plugged in when they're sleeping because that's a window of opportunity to have a lower EMF environment has a lot to do with something called VGCC. So these are the voltage gated calcium channels and they form something so that what that means is that they open up and too much calcium is flooding into your cells. And there's something called peroxynitrite that forms. It is a toxic uh, free radical and this raises your blood glucose levels. So another reason why cleaning up your environment is really important and in my opinion, sometimes even more important than the foods that you're putting into your body, you've got to clean up that environment as well to help to regulate your blood sugar levels. And of course, another cause that you know shouldn't be a surprise is lack of exercise. We know that exercise helps us to burn through our glucose, and being sedentary is definitely going to be a risk factor for you know developing more of these blood sugar and the insulin resistance issues. Now stress. We know that stress is not our friend and we all have some stress, but whether it's good, so positive stress, you know, you're excited about something or negative stress and, and your body's sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight response is always engaged, then this can have a negative effect on your blood glucose levels as well. So there's something again called the cytokines and other hormones like epinephrine that increase the production of glucose by breaking down our glycogen stores. Again, this goes into survival mechanism and protecting our bodies so that our very important organs always have enough sugar to run at their best. So this is something that we definitely want to be aware of. Our stress levels, you know, take advantage of all of my auditory, the binaural beats, relaxation, meditation videos that I have on YouTube because they're so fantastic at helping to turn off that sympathetic fight or flight part of your nervous system, get you more into the parasympathetic, the more relaxed state, that meditative state, and helps to really slow down those brain waves as well, which is really important for your overall health and decreasing that stress and helping to decrease that hormone, especially cortisol, which during stress is released and will block the effects of insulin from taking glucose. Remember that lock and key mechanism, it won't be able to bring that glucose into the cell to be burned up as energy. So stress has a lot to do with our health. And this could be another reason. I mean, maybe you're eating an okay diet. You're not having a lot of the PUFAs or the carbs. Maybe you've limited now your blue light toxicity because you've watched my videos for a while, but you still have high blood sugar levels. It could be your stress. So just to be aware of that. Now, another cause of the insulin resistance and high blood sugar levels can be infections. So whether that's a chronic infection that your body is having difficulty eliminating, you know, um, some bacteria, some parasites and things. And when your immune system is trying to fight off infections, it is again, a natural mechanism to raise the blood glucose level so that your organs for survival, like your brain, your kidneys, and red blood cells uh, can depend on that glucose for proper functioning. So that's something, again, that you may not be aware. So if you've got a chronic, imagine you have a chronic, you know, parasitic issue, this could be raising your blood glucose level. And a lot of people have parasites and candida in these things. So that's why, again, I'm big on doing the full body detox and parasite cleansing at least three to four times a year. I've got a ton of other videos on how to do that effectively, so make sure you check those out on YouTube as well. And certain medications will also raise your blood glucose levels. So things like steroids and corticosteroids, which are usually anti-inflammatories, the statin drugs to lower cholesterol will raise your blood glucose levels. That's usually a direct correlation. So you start with high you know, cholesterol and then soon you need something for your diabetes and this is very very common so just be very aware of that when you're going you know conventional routes in terms of treating some of these things and that's why of course I always like to do things more naturally if you do have high cholesterol it's not the end of the world um, and that's something that I'll share maybe ask me that question on the live after we finish streaming and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about just remember to remind me about asking about my own cholesterol and I'll tell you a little tidbit about that which is interesting now there's other drugs that are anti-anxiety medications, ADHD drugs, uh, drugs for depression and other mental, you know, um, health problems. These can also raise your blood sugar levels so that that's a risk, um, again, in my opinion. 
Birth control pills can raise your blood glucose as well as high blood pressure pills and even acne medications. So, you know, the ones that are based on, on vitamin A um, are very strong and they can raise your blood glucose levels. And then there's some over-the-counter meds that can also spike your blood sugar, like the decongestants in some cold and flu medicines, even cough syrup. So usually it's a pseudoephedrine, so watch out for that. Cough syrup... Um, and of course, a vitamin when it's not natural, so especially niacin. So um, niacin can raise your blood glucose levels, which is something, again, that you may not have known, especially when it's the synthetic type of niacin or niacinamide. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Janine. I'm talking about insulin resistance and diabetes, what you need to know. Hello to Arletta and Sonia on Facebook, Marie and Lisa on YouTube, nice to see you. Um, Arletta, does fish oil help with the leptin resistance? Yes, absolutely. That is a great question. You need to have that proper leptin signaling in the brain and the eye. So it's that natural sunlight coming into the eye. If you're lacking in DHA, so not all fish oil, if you're lacking, especially in that DHA, that chemical signal from that sunlight will not turn into a DC electric current in your brain to turn up and, and turn on all of your wiring of your brain and your nervous system. So, And that is related to your leptin signaling as well. So that is a great question, Arletta. Um, Sonia, does this change in any way if you do not have a gallbladder? Are you referring to the leptin signaling? Yes, slightly it would, uh, but there's a way around that. If you are ensuring that you have proper liver function, then you can, in some ways, and you're taking specific enzymes uh, to help to break down your fats, then you can definitely minimize the negative impact of what's going on um, with your blood sugar levels if you don't have a gallbladder. That's a great question, Sonia, as well. Wow, such intelligent people out there watching. So thank you, thank you. Um, Francis is here. Hey, good morning. Nice to see you. And Marilyn, okay, you do have some insulin resistance happening. Well, we hopefully are sharing enough information to be able to help you. And I'm getting to the tips in just a second. Um, and okay, so Carmen has a great question. I'm going to get to that after after we finish the quiz section. So thank you. And Brent is here as well. Hello, hello. A lot of my regulars are here. Hi, nice to see you all. Okay, so what are some of the signs and symptoms of insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome? So, sorry? Oh yes, thank you. So we're gonna go and take a quick look at this. So if you have three out of the five of some of the things on this poster, so one of them would be high blood sugar levels, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, and if you have low HDL, so your good cholesterol, as it's called, um, not that I always agree with those terminologies, and high LDL, which is often termed as the bad cholesterol, and abdominal obesity. So if we look at your fat distribution, if it's around your midsection, so if you have three out of the five of those symptoms, then you would be considered having metabolic syndrome or it's called syndrome X. And this is something that, you know, there's some other symptoms like browning of the folds. If you get a lot of skin tags around, usually around the neck area, that can be related to this as well. Uh, if you have a lot of fatigue, inability to focus, and there are other, you know, in terms of male and female reproductive health, so polycystic ovaries in women and erectile dysfunction, in men, these are, you know, some of the things that can be correlated and most likely are correlated to what's happening. And remember, going back to leptin signaling first and then and your leptin resistance and then the insulin resistance. So for some people, when they do have, you know, a high blood sugar level, they feel kind of drunk and um, <laughs> it's not because of alcohol, it's because of the blood sugar level. So that's something, you know, to be aware of and become more in tune with your own body as to, you know, some things that may sort of spike your insulin levels as well as you know having that belly fat as we said it could be the muffin top as well but if you tend to carry a lot of your body weight in your midsection and you know especially if you crave a lot of carbohydrates you know what is going on with your you know um with that insulin sensitivity and insensitivity 
as I said before, the polycystic ovaries, erectile dysfunction in men, and some of the early symptoms of actually now getting diabetes could be, you know, frequent urination, you could have muscle wasting and a lot of chronic, chronic fatigue. So you're tired all the time could be a symbol, you know, symptom that definitely you need to go and have your blood sugar checked and have, you know, um, your doctor check into what's happening. Now, eventually these things can progress into life-threatening conditions like heart attacks, strokes, nerve damage, organ damage, Alzheimer's, and even cancer. So getting your blood glucose under control is really important. It's not just about your body composition and your body weight. It's about preventing, you know, some of these more serious conditions in the future, which is so important. Now, what are some of the worst foods for diabetes and high blood sugar? Well, of course, the high glycemic foods, so the high sugary foods, the carbohydrates, typically the sugars, the candies, you know, the baked goods, anything that is going to spike that insulin very quickly will definitely be compromising to your insulin and your pancreatic function. And as I mentioned before, the PUFAs, so the polyunsaturated fatty acids in your vegetable oils, Excuse me. So that definitely, whether it is, you know, the vegetable oils, the fried foods, but if, if you're cooking at home and watch for the vegetable oils, the canola oil hidden in packaged foods as well. So this is something that, you know, going back as far as the 1920s, there was a Dr. Sweeney who was able to produce reversible diabetes in all of his medical school students. So back in the 20s, yeah, you could get away with, you know, experimenting, I guess, on your, on your students in medical school. And what he did was feed them a high vegetable oil diet for just 48 hours. And none of the students had previously been diabetic. So he was able to produce diabetes in just two days by feeding these, you know, students a high vegetable oil diet. So that, that says a lot, I think. Now, in more recent years, research was done at Duke University, and they were able to cause test animals to develop diabetes simply by feeding them diets high in the PUFAs. So again, word to the wise, just do your best to eliminate them from your diet. Now, there are some foods, of course, that are better for you that to, will help to balance your blood glucose levels. So I put some of my favorites. I mean, there's, there's a lot, but I, I put some of my favorites on the list, as you could probably see if you've watched my videos before. So number one is cinnamon. So sprin sprinkle cinnamon. I mean, use it in baking. Sprinkle it on your coffee, which is on the list as well. Uh, and this is a great way to balance your blood glucose levels. And this has actually been studied, so there is literature that <clears throat> talks about this. Dark chocolate is also on the list. So not, no, not the high sugar, you know, regular, as we call North American chocolate. No, it's high quality, dark, preferably organic chocolate can help to balance your blood glucose levels. Now, coffee is on the list as well as well as coconut, so coconut being a healthier fat, absolutely, as opposed to the polyunsaturated fats. And we also have avocado, as well as olive oil, and grass-fed butter or ghee is also something that's great, especially in our cold Canadian winters. This is where I tend to go in terms of the, the fats in the winter time. And apple cider vinegar can help to stabilize your blood sugar and your insulin levels. So I do have a recipe, a great hack for balancing blood glucose um, on YouTube. So check that out and how you can make it more palatable if you're going to be drinking the apple cider vinegar. It's a great recipe. So check that out. I think it's posted on, on my TikTok as well. Okay, so there are some of my favorite herbal medicines to help to balance your blood glucose levels. So very quickly, I love African wild mango seed. It helps to lower blood glucose. And a, a study was done that showed that it actually significantly decreased waist circumference. So yeah, so that belly fat that we talk about because of helping with that blood sugar level, great uh, in the African wild mango seed as well as white mulberry leaf, which helps with appetite control and cravings for carbohydrates. I also love gymnema. So this is known as miracle fruit and it helps the pancreas to shift sugar into muscles to be burned as fuel. So that is great for anybody who 
loves to exercise for bodybuilders as well, shifting that sugar into the muscles for that active, you know, metabolism of the muscular tissue. And it also helps to regenerate the beta cells in the pancreas. So, and these are our insulin producing cells, uh, which is fantastic. I also love muscadine grape skin. So this contains elagic acid and this helps to control blood glucose levels and they that's something that can be taken as part of a supplement and of course turmeric so turmeric with the active component of curcumin helps to balance blood glucose levels as shown in different studies but in this study showed that helped um, to okay this is about cinnamon I thought it was talking, yeah, this is, anyway, this is about cinnamon, but cinnamon is great as well. Um, and being efficacious for helping to balance our blood glucose levels. So turmeric is something that I take daily, um, helps on so many levels as an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, helps with sleep and brain function and detoxing the brain, but also it helps with balancing blood glucose levels. So that's something that you can do as well. And, and now we are at the tips section of the show. So I've got nine tips to help with regulating and balancing our blood glucose levels. And this is great for anybody who's pre-diabetic or even diabetic. So tip number one, of course, is to fix your leptin resistance. So this, I, you know, if you've missed my videos on this, I do have a video, nine tips to fix your leptin resistance. Please check that out. One of those tips is to not eat before bed. So you want to be pretty much in a fasted state at least three hours before bedtime so that your body can have that proper leptin signaling in the brain. Also looking at the sunrise every morning is really important for your leptin signaling. Tip number two is to eat just two to three meals per day without snacking. So you do not want to be raising your blood glucose levels throughout the day because what happens is this whole, you know, roller coaster effect and this is something that you definitely want to eliminate that snacking you want to get a little bit hungry enjoy your meal and then not eat again for a few hours so this is where the intermittent fasting and fasting comes into play and is very effective for a lot of people to help to balance their blood glucose levels okay tip number three is to eliminate the high glycemic carbohydrates so choose the foods you know, on the list that are lower in that carb index and choose some of the healthy foods. So the things like the cinnamon, a little bit of dark chocolate, coffee can help to balance your blood glucose levels. And of course the healthy fats is tip number four. So you want to avoid your highly processed PUFAs, but you want to have some healthy fats as I had mentioned earlier in today's episode. Tip number five is do some exercise after a meal. So this, and this has been studied. So if even, especially if you, and I, I do this, I mean, I'm guilty of this. I do like to have, you know, my treats once in a while or go out for dinner and you have some carbs that you don't usually eat I'll do some type of exercise even if it's just you know in in you know my room um, before bed just doing a few squats I often will do squats and things when I'm brushing my teeth just just a little bit of movement because this will really help with your blood glucose levels going for a short walk can be really efficacious and this has been studied as well okay tip number six is stop your blue light exposure so doing whatever you can to not be on your devices especially after the sun has gone down is really important remember that toxic blue light exposure is going to raise your blood glucose levels tip number seven is to use herbal medicines as I had mentioned so like the African wild mango seed the gymnema um, and I promise that we'll put links in the video below in the description so that you can see a great combination for some of my favorite herbal medicines to balance your blood sugar levels and it helps with leptin signaling as well. Tip number eight is to use turmeric and of course that concentrated curcumin helps to stabilize those blood glucose levels which is fantastic and tip number nine is in terms of the mind-body connection which you know that I'm all about finding that connection mind body and spirit that moderation is key. So when you're more in tune with nature, with the universe, you are less likely to need these outside influences of, you know, the carbohydrates and, you know, the treats and things. Your things just get more balanced and there's less of a need to get those outside forms of reward to make you feel good temporarily. I do have a whole show all on sugar addiction so check that out because if you are in fact 
addicted to sugar, then this is a problem as well because it's stimulating your brain and your dopamine receptors. And this is something that, yeah, you feel good in the moment, but then not so good after the fact. And with your blood glucose levels, you want to maintain that balance as well as possible. And this will really help your overall functioning. So we're at quiz time now. So if you're just tuning in today, we talked all about insulin resistance and diabetes, what you need to know. So it is quiz time. I hope everybody's ready. I hope everybody is well studied. So from last week's show, and let's get started. Do I have everybody here? Everybody's ready? Oh, I see a lot of commenting on, thank God for dark chocolate. I agree. Yes. What would we do without dark chocolate? Um, DPS Sherry, hey, you're late, but it's okay. You're here, which is awesome. And it is quiz time. So thank you. Um, and I know you've got some questions on B12. I'll get to that in just a moment. Okay. Are we ready? Here we go. Question number one, true or false? And remember what we're playing for, everybody. If this is your first time tuning in, we're playing for this. So make sure you're following Team Dr. J9 on TikTok. Make sure you're following me on all the platforms. If you are the winner, that we can reach out to you because your name and all you have to do is attempt to answer the questions. You don't have to get them correct. But if, you know, you are selected randomly from all of our participants, we need to be able to reach you. So make sure that you are following us. Okay. Question number one, true or false? DHA has been shown to increase insulin sensitivity. True or false? DHA has been shown to increase insulin sensitivity. Hello to Samantha. Hello, Marie. TikTok has it already? Wow. Wow. Steve, that was quick. Steph, good, good, good. DPS Sherry, very, very good. Monica, good job. Caldwell Cutie, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Good job. Brent, um, TML Signals, good job. Nadia on Instagram, hello, hello. Nice to see you. Good job, good job. Anybody else? I think we're getting much faster in our quiz sections. Everybody's ready for it and you know what to... Uh... Colleen on Instagram has it as well. Good job. Um, it's okay. SF Hooker, it's okay. Just do your best. 50-50 chance. Um, anybody else? True or false? DHA has been shown to increase insulin sensitivity. The answer is... Whoa, whoa, steve -o. I'll I'll answer fashion questions after we're done live. <laughs> After we're done on YouTube, I'll answer any fashion questions. It's so funny. This happens every time. Um, okay, so the answer is true. The answer is true. So DHA helps with insulin sensitivity, and that's important because we don't want to be insulin insensitive, which is the insulin resistance. So that's why another reason why if you missed last week's show, make sure you check it out all about DHA. Okay, question number two. What non-dietary factor destroys DHA in the body rapidly? Non-dietary factor destroys DHA in the body rapidly. Um, okay, the Cheryl Lynn, DHA is the omega-3. And I already see the answer. Oh my goodness. Missy JX2, I am very proud of you. That is uh, Melbert as well. Oh my goodness. I thought this was a trick question. Um, but obviously not for people that have been watching my shows and my content. So I'm so proud. I'm so proud. This is so good. So again, the question is what non-dietary factor destroys DHA in the body rapidly, especially in the eyes? Yes, Mud the Weenie. Hey, nice to see you. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Missy, that's awesome. Brent, that's a good answer as well. And Raina, also a good answer. Um, anybody else? So the answer is... Okay, Marie has it. Sorry, I wasn't looking over here. Marie on YouTube. Um, feel free behind the scenes to come and yell at me. <laughs> I need somebody else in my ear too. Um, Arletta, good job on YouTube, on Facebook, on Facebook. Um, Marie had it on YouTube. Good job. Lisa, good try. Um, 
Mar Mar Mariza? Mariza, good try as well. Not what I was looking for, um, but very close. Arletta has it on Facebook, so good job. Anybody else? It's blue light. Yes, blue light blocking glasses help. They help a lot. Yes, yes, yes. So that, and that's, you know, one of the things, uh, besides the fact that, you know, making sure that you're taking enough DHA every single day. Okay, question number three, true or false? DHA supplementation can help brown age spots on the skin. True or false? DHA supplementation can help the brown age spots on your skin. Hmm. Um, Raina, good job. SF Hooker, um, stay tuned where the blue light is. I will... Yeah, Brent, you got it because I said the eye. Good job. Uh, and Monica Atkinson had it as well, the previous question. Okay, Brent, good job. TML Signals, good job. Shells222, good job. Caldwell Cutie, good job. Liz Q on Insta, good job. Um, wow, a lot of people here. Sharon Lafontaine, five, good job. Motherweenie, good job. Michelle Wegg, three, three, five, five, stay tuned for that. I will show you exactly what I take. Um, so even when we say goodbye, stay, stay on TikTok because I'll, I'll share some of these answers here. Um, Elsie Castles, good job. Anybody else? Oh, Lisa, good job. Uh, uh, Nadia, good job. Mariza, good job. Samantha, good job on Facebook. Pauline on Insta as well. Arletta, good job. Okay, so the answer is true so dha supplementation can really help the brown age spots it's something that i've experienced personally by upping my dha consumption in the last year it's amazing so i'll talk more about that on TikTok and instagram after we're done we just have two more questions okay question number four name a good dietary source of dha name a good source of dietary dha um <laughs> Caldwell Cutie. <laughs> yeah, you always do well in the quiz section. Um, the answers are, oh my goodness, lots of answers. Okay, Michelle Wegg, good job. Lovely. Parker, nice to see you, good job. Um, Francis, nice to see you, good. Melbourne, Sharon LaFontaine, a DPS Sherry, good job. Raina, um, yes, good job. Caldwell Cutie. Mud the weenie. Colleen on Insta. Good job. Liz Q. Who else has it here? Uh, Mariza, good job. Virginia, good job on Facebook and on YouTube. Eileen on Insta as well. Good job. So, anybody else? Brent, good job. Um, Steph K01, good job. NJS or NJ Slim. Good job. Yes, so any type of fish or seafood I would take here. Salmon, mackerel, um, any type of shellfish. Of course, the oily, more oily the fish, um, the better I prefer wild. Absolutely, Brent, good job. Um, and so great, great answers. Everyone, I'm trying to see if there was, um, and lovely Parker and Raina I, as well said green leafies. It's just very difficult to convert it into the active DHA. So that's an algae on Instagram as well was an answer. Yeah. So it's, it's just very difficult for that conversion. And that's why I prefer, of course, if you're not a strict vegetarian or a vegan to, um, if you're not going to eat those foods, at least take the extracted DHA and a fish oil supplement. In my opinion, that's the best thing for your brain and your your eye health and for your nervous system and your leptin signaling as well. And your circadian rhythms. Okay, question number five, final question. Name two signs and symptoms of a DHA deficiency. Give me any two and preferably in the same answer. So give me two. Oh, Nadia had a great for the previous question salmon rainbow trout oysters shrimp she gave four so that was great 
So for this question, and Marie had a great answer as well, Lisa as well, um, all on YouTube. So thank you for all of your participation and Arletta as well. Good, good, good. Had two answers. Okay, final question. Two signs and symptoms of a DHA deficiency. DPS Sherry, good job. Um, Albert, good job. Michelle Way, good job. Yes, yes. Missy JX2, good job. Everybody on, on TikTok is very quick. Caldwell Cutie, good. Brent, good. Um, Blue Moon Energy, good. TML Signals, very good. Uh, Raina, good. Sharon Lafatine, good. Colleen on Insta. Anybody else? Last attempt. Michigan Minton, thank you for joining. You're just tuning into the tail end of the Dr. Janine show. We're in the quiz section where everybody's trying their best to answer my quiz questions. Uh, Virginia Gallegos, good job. Mariza, good. Yes, yes. Nadia, good job. Lisa, good job as well on YouTube. Liz, Liz Q as well. Good job. Marie, good job on YouTube as well. Awesome, awesome. Um, Raina, that's so sweet. Thank you. I try to do my best. I try to keep it fun too. Thank you for all the likes. That's so kind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so anybody who's just tuning in, we're, this is the Dr. Janine show. We're talking all about insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance, syndrome X. If you missed the show, it will live live on YouTube so you can check it out again. Thanks for all the likes. I see lots of hearts coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, so uh, two signs and symptoms. So hair loss, you could have dry skin, weight gain, depression, poor memory, ADD, ADHD, all signs and symptoms of a DHA deficiency, a lot of pain and inflammation, sore joints, poor eyesight, um, so fatigue, brain fog, skin issues. Yeah, we had a lot of great answers. Memory loss, allergies, really good answer as well, Malbird. So. Yeah, anybody who's experienced any of these, um, that is, oh, J9 Defines is here. You call yourself J9 too? Hey, nice to meet you, J9. I love meeting other J9s. There's so many of us. We're so cool. Um, anyway, so thank you everybody for tuning in today. So if you did miss the show, it, is, it will live on YouTube so you can check it out. I'm Dr. Janine. We talked all about insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance, diabetes as well. And of course, what you can do naturally to help yourself to stabilize your blood glucose levels. We talked about the leptin resistance as well. So if you missed those videos, please check them out. If you do continue to have questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Please share this video as well, whatever, you know, streaming platform that you're watching on. I truly appreciate it. And a big thumbs up and all the hearts and things that I'm getting as well. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and click that bell to turn on the post notifications so that you're always aware of my newest and latest uploads, which happens every single day of the week. So please take advantage of my YouTube channel. Go to Dr. Janine Baring ND on YouTube. Check it out. We have so much content there and it's always being updated every single day. So please check it out. And you know, give your feedback. I love to hear from all of you. Everyone does have a calling in life and mine is to empower you to live a healthy lifestyle and of course to do it naturally. Thanks for watching.